Thanks very much for staying with us. Time now for Iron Africa with me, Georgia Calvin Smith. Tonight, Cameroon security forces put down a riot by prisoners at a jail in Yaoundé. Inmates live stream the uprising as they call for better food and living conditions. Also, Kenya's finance minister pleads not guilty to corruption charges before being released on bail. It's an unprecedented legal move against a sitting minister in a country notorious for graft. And between 18 and 21 people die of gun violence in South Africa every day. A group of young reporters from just outside Johannesburg is hoping to tackle the problem by getting people to talk it out. But first, prison rioters in Yaoundé live-streamed their uprising as they ransacked the facility where they were being held. Many of the inmates caught up in Monday night's violence were government op opponents or supporters of the Anglophone separatist movement that's currently dividing the country. Despite the unrest, no one escaped from the notoriously overcrowded Condegui site. Our correspondent sent us this report. 24 hours after inmates at the Kondengi Maximum Security Prison in Cameroon's capital Yaoundé staged riots, security has been reinforced. Police vans and anti-riot trucks are stationed all around the surrounding neighborhood. The riots, which started early Monday, left inhabitants of the Kondengi neighborhood panicked. We were hearing people screaming, shoot here, shoot there. There were a lot of gunshots. When I was outside, it sounded like death was coming for me. Inmates arrested in connection to the country's anglophone crisis started the unrest. They want better conditions as some are calling for their immediate release. Some of the prisoners release videos of their grievances on social media. Among those protesting at the prison were members of the opposition CRM party. Its vice president was arrested last month and is being held at Kondengi. Their complaints are more political. We have no problem with the prison superintendent. Our fight is with the Minister of Justice. The Kondengi Maximum Prison was initially made to hold 800 people. Today, it holds over 5,000 inmates who complain of overcrowding and unhygienic conditions. We slept outside, in the rain, in the wind. It was terrible. We sometimes wondered if we had any dignity left. We are prisoners, but we deserve some respect. Even animals are better off than prisoners in Kodengi. While the dust is still to settle in Yaoundé, gunshots were heard around Boya Prison in the southwest region of Cameroon, where Anglophone detainees also staged. Well, Kenyan's, Kenya's finance minister was released on bail on Tuesday after his arrest over more than 10 counts of fraud. Henry Rotich is the most senior official to be arrested under President Uhuru Kenyatta in a country notorious for its problem of deeply entrenched corruption. Laurent Berstaker has more. Pleading not guilty, Henry Rotich was released on bail after becoming the first sitting Kenyan minister to be formally charged with corruption. Of course, opening charges against the person who has been in charge of uh, public finance policy in this country is a significant step. At the heart of the accusations, a multi-million dollar project to build two giant dams in western Kenya. The country's chief prosecutor says the cost of building was raised by over $160 million by the finance ministry without any justification and that the awarding of the contract to an Italian construction company was riddled with irregularities. Rotich and more than 20 top officials have been charged with over 10 financial crimes, including fraud, abuse of office and receiving bribes. And Kenyan authorities say they will seek the extradition of the Italian firm CEO. He's not managed to present himself, so we will be seeking um, for, for his extradition to come and face uh, um, the charges here in Kenya. Uh, we will also issue an international uh, arrest warrant. The arrest of Henry Rotich, who has so far not resigned or been removed from his position, is highly symbolic in Kenya, a country that's regularly plagued by corruption scandals and where hundreds of millions of dollars vanish from public coffers each year. President Uhuru Kenyatta, 
who was re-elected in 2017, has vowed to tackle the issue. Dozens of government officials have already been charged with graft under his administration. That report by Laura Berstecker. Well, Shiite Muslims from the Islamic movement of Nigeria held a funeral on Tuesday for victims of clashes with police in Abuja a day earlier. Security forces used live ammunition and at least eight people were killed, including one policeman and a journalist. More protests were held on Tuesday. Members of the Islamic movement of Nigeria have been rallying regularly, calling for the release of their leader, Sheikh Ibrahim Zakzaki, who was arrested back in 2015. His supporters say that his health is failing and they accuse authorities of deliberate persecution. Rights groups say that hundreds of IMM members have been killed by security forces over the last few years. We came out to protest today, but unfortunately, you witness it. I'm to the teeth. Uh, 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 armed forces were there to prevent the, the protest. But it was enough that people witnessed that we came out. And so also we shall continue coming out until our aim is achieved. And we start the protest from Nitel Junction going to the Secretariat. And we, as, as we reach Secretariat, we have start to receive a gunshot by Nigerian police. The Gambian army officers testified that he and two colleagues murdered a journalist back in 2004 on the orders of then-president Yayo Jame. Lieutenant Malik Jatta admitted to shooting Deida Haidara dead and to being involved in the killings of more than 50 migrants in 2005. Jatta is testifying before a truth commission that's aimed at looking at abuses committed under Jame. After 22 violent years in power, he fled to Equatorial Guinea in 2017 after losing an election. And hundreds of Sudanese students chanting civilian rule, civilian rule, rallied in Khartoum on Tuesday. They're trying to seek justice for fellow pupils who've been killed over the months of political unrest that have followed the ousting of President Omar al-Bashir back in April. The rally follows a power-sharing deal that was signed last week between protest leaders and army rulers. But negotiations still haven't addressed accountability for the hundreds of people killed since demonstrations first erupted in December. And between 18 and 21 people die of gun violence in South Africa every day. One group of young reporters from the Alexandra Township in, in Johannesburg is hoping to tackle the problem by getting people to talk it out. Live on air, take a look. And the topic of the day is the role of policy and how you can influence gun laws. Jennifer Ngobeni is not just another radio announcer. She produces and co-hosts a radio show on Alex FM with other teenagers. They talk about gun violence and its effects on their lives. Alexandra Township, which borders South Africa's richest square mile, Santon, is one of the roughest and most violent suburbs of Johannesburg. With gun violence, it's something that people in Alexandria have tend, have, have tend to normalize, which is not a good thing. So I, us talking about gun violence actually helps make people realize and makes them gain conscious that it's not okay um, to be kill, for someone to be killed with a gun. According to Gun Free South Africa, between 18 and 21 people are killed by firearms every day in the country. Marianne, an activist for the organization, trains these young journalists. She teaches them how to target gun violence through their reporting and, down the line, change Alexandra. Alexandra has a history of violence. And it's, you know, they, some people call Alexandra Gomorrah, and that's not something one can be proud of. I mean, why are we being compared to Gomorrah? Every week, Jennifer and her peers take to the streets of Alexandra and speak to people affected by crime in the community. These interviews are at the centre of the one-hour Saturday programme, supported by Children's Radio Foundation and Gun Free South Africa. We're only killing our society by keeping quiet about certain issues and us talking about them, we're influencing other young people that your voice matters. You know, I hate saying that we, I hate saying this, um, we're speaking for the voiceless. They're not voiceless, they just need a platform and that's what we're doing. We're giving them a platform in order to voice their issues. Since 2014, over 50 young journalists have been involved in the program called Bigger Than Life. 
As they continue to mobilize for gun-free zones in their communities, the skills they learn today could see them becoming the next big names in radio or advocacy in the future. Well, that's it for Iron Africa. Thanks for joining us. Do so again. Take care.